Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today, sweaty. I just came back from the gym, from the gymnasia. How to work out, because I have a goal to lose more. But the thing here is this. Even though I'm sweaty and I'm tired, doesn't matter. You know why? Because I'm on one take wonder mode. And Kuroko no Basket is here, early. Akashi says, um, yeah, this dude. At least it was his time. Oh, no, no, it still is, because the way the chapter ends off, it's as if, like, the king of the jungle, the lion, even though lions don't live in jungles, it looks like his pride has been wounded, because the quote-unquote weakest of the gen, Kuroko, has thwarted his plan, has thwarted his drive, his intensity, and has stolen the ball from the king of the jungle. So it looks like there's something happening to Akashi as we have Kuroko and Kagami on a fast break. So, I, yo, dude, listen, man. If his dual personality comes out in the next chapter, I'm going apeshit. You know what? You know what? You know what? Next chapter, next chapter, we're going to do a live reaction. Because I swear to God, if his dual personality comes out, if the other Akashi just peekaboos his head, I'm losing my mind. I'm, I'm going crazy. So, let me move on. This chapter is very simple. All it really is, is us getting to find out about Kuroko a little bit more. Where Kuroko apparently watches the games after they're done of his opponents. So, for example, if they're going to play against Kaijo, Team Satan. And then Kaijo has two previous matches. Kuroko will analyze the shit out of these two previous matches of uh, out of these two previous matches before he actually goes against Kaijo. It is a part of his misdirection to thoroughly analyze his opponents. It's different than a magic trick. Misdirection, a key part of that is knowing how your opponent works, their play style, their preferences, their habits, and so on and so forth. So Kuroko spends a lot of time analyzing and just working on what he can do to better his misdirection for a particular team that he's playing against. Now, this allows him to gain greater insight on guys even like Akashi Seijiro. However, the main thing here in this chapter is not his insight on Akashi, but Kuroko's insight on his teammates. Kuroko can better predict what his teammates will do than Akashi's Emperor's Eye. So, what we see here at the end, at the end of the chapter is Akashi going two-on-one against Kuroko and Kagami. Kagami shifts to the right, and Akashi predicts that, and he goes and dribbles to his right. Thus, Kagami's left. But Kuroko foresees this before Akashi does. Because Kuroko has spent so much time with his teammates. So he moves to the left before Akashi does. So Akashi just winds up in Kuroko's lap. No homo. So what ends up happening is he steals the ball because of that reason. And it was shocking because when Midorima is explaining it, Midorima was explaining how Kuroko didn't watch Akashi. Kuroko watched Kagami. The entire time he was watching Kagami. And what was Kagami going to do? And based on Kagami's actions, he took the reverse, therefore able to counteract the Emperor's Eye. In fact, he pointed out to be a pseudo-Emperor's Eye, or a quasi-Emperor's Eye. Now, to me, at first, I'm like, ah, I'm not liking it. Because, here's my thing. I understand that Kuroko, initially in the game, his misdirection was quote-unquote thwarted because he had attained this quote-unquote light. Therefore, someone like Chihiro could outshadow him, out-phantom the Phantom Six-Man. But the thing here is that once Kuroko got back to the game, how come this wasn't in play? Because they were still in... A dire situation the entire time, but Kuroko came back and then they got some motivation back. So maybe this was already in play, but 
it wasn't mentioned until now. Like, the author does tend to mention these things conveniently right before their showcase. That is one thing I do notice, that sometimes can be a good thing or a bad thing. And in this case, I'm not too sure. This quasi, this pseudo-emperor eye, that is only for his teammates and not for the opponents. So in this case, he's able to actually outbeat Akashi, and that's a good thing. Because now they have a chance. I mean, it worked this one time. I don't know if I don't know if it's gonna work again. So for the first time, I'm okay. The second time, third time, fourth time, now I'm kind of iffy because yeah, like it, it, it throws me off. It, it does this quasi emperor's eye. I get it, but again, it throws me off. And finally. I do want to point out that before this whole quasi empire was revealed, and before Croco steals the ball, we do have Team Satan, mainly Izuki and Tepe, try and do a move outside of Akashi's field that is defense. However, and this, y'all, 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 five foot seven. Has never been more deadly. Tepe is going for a dunk. Tepe, big dude. He's 6'3 plus, he has to be. Big dude. He's going to the air, he's flying. Akashi rejects the dunk. I know he's in the zone, and I know previously he stated that, you know, you thought that, he, he said to like everyone on the court, quote unquote, you thought that the big guys had a pan on dunks, and then here he is dunking at like 5'7 at the beginning of the damn match. But I'm like, dude, did he just block Kiyoshi? I'm like, wait, hold on. Like, whoa! Like, whoa! That's kind of crazy, man. That really is. Akashi's a freak. He's a monster. So, the question here is... A. Are Kagami and Kuroko, now that they're on a fast break, because they've stolen the ball from Akashi, are they still relatively safe? Like, are they able to score a basket now? Which, I have a funny feeling, not going to be the case. I don't think so. B. When the Lion's pride was wounded, what is the end result? Will he go deeper into the zone, or will the alter ego emerge? That's, number, that's, that's, that's B. Number two. And C. The quasi-emperor's eye. Is it cool? Is it, like, can we accept it? Or is it more or less an ass pull? Because like, it really does seem that way. It, it does. It makes sense within the confounds of the story. But like for example. For example. If we had seen Kuroko do this before. When it came to analyzing. Uh, when it came to analyzing video footage of other teammates. For hours on end. Before anyone else showed up in the gym. And... I mean, because I think we've seen Kuroko read his opponent based on what his teammates do. We've seen that before. I remember we saw this when it came to... I think... I want to say it was like... Yeah, like, it was... Uh, it was like... I think like, like the first game against Shutoku and Satan, Where Kagami jumps to try and block Midorima. Midorima fakes it. And then he goes for the actual shot, but Kuroko, but Kuroko knew that. But that was more or less Kuroko reading Midorima. But at the same time, reading, so so like it was a mix of both in that in that case. So I'm trying to think of cases where Kuroko's actually done that. But there's been so many games thus far where I can't really remember them all. So I'm gonna take it for now. I'll accept it for now. But if this becomes more broken later on, where he can actually compete with someone who is like Akashi, someone like him in the zone, that's kind of scary. Now, granted, again, light and shadow, it's very symbolic. Where Kagami, he's the light, and he's 
in the front. He's the he's like the first wave. He's the front wall, the first dude. But behind the lad, but behind the quote unquote light is the shadow that is Kurogo. To make sure that if the light fails, the shadow is going to be there to make up for the light. So there was symbolism there as well in this chapter. But again, at first it does seem like an ass pull, but I'll take it. I'll take it because I right now mixed feelings pretty much. So I'm done. Overall, the chapter, again, Akashi, ferocious, disgusting, nasty. Ugh. Just makes her tongue... Eh, like you were licking dirt the entire day. Like, eh, eh, eh. Just nasty, disgusting. But awesome at the same time. So, Akashi, once again, props him because he's just disgusting. And the fact that he blocked Kiyoshi, just fucking stunning. Stunning. And, like, you can see Nibuya. Nibuya, he couldn't react in time. And Nibuya's trying to, you know, block Kiyoshi. But Akashi said, I don't have faith in you guys anymore. I don't trust you guys. I got it. Fucking. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> All right. But overall, chapter rating, good plus. And I will see you guys later. King Lightning, give me your thoughts on A, B, and C. Rate the video. Comment, subscribe. Peace. Have a nice day.